straight out of a cone. Who would have thought that, though? I mean, although right. playing on okay. PlayStation, downloading the games from there is easier for me now, but man, yep. the store. Yeah. Nah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> Why? Fuck GameStop. <laughs> I'm just okay. gonna throw that out there, bro. Like, GameStop, I, I'm just gonna be honest, GameStop was racist. GameStop did not let a real oh. nigga be a gamer. Like, they was rude as hell. I don't know what kind of stores like, you no. was going up in, but mine? <laughs> <laughs> Man, no, and no, cause see, you, know it, you know what it is, Sly, and this is in no disrespect, but you got the aura of being in GameStop. I look like I'm supposed to be on the corner moving weight like a biggie. Ah. Big <laughs> so they look at me like, oh, why are you in? Like, oh, I guess you want to know, uh, come reserve the new Madden, right? No, bitch, I want to know about the next Legend of Zelda. Don't do that shit. Don't you? Okay, don't put don't, me in the Don't you put me in a category of being a mainstream gamer that only cares about 2K? And they cuss them out before I walk out, but, but on the real, the wind line come out. So, <laughs> but on the real, when the line come out. It's an office, like, I, I want that too. I'm a multiple game. Yo, have you said, you need to say that. You need to write that down, and you need to say that not only on stage, but in other lives. That's hilarious. I will do that. I That's do funny that. as hell. <laughs> but on the real, when it come out. Oh. <laughs> yeah, really. Really. Throw that in there too when I get up there. Woo! All that. But man, uh, but yeah, so are y'all ready for this debate? I'm excited. All right. All right. So Did you say no, Cleo? Like, no, sir, I'm ready. Let's do it. Oh. <laughs> I'm as ready as I'm going to be. Um. <laughs> we got to get Sly stuff together. We gotta do you listen to GoFundMe? Oh, I'm, I'm messing around with it. Uh -oh. So it's one of those either the, the camera's going to work and the sound mm -hmm. don't work. Oh. The sound's going to work and yeah, the video ain't going to work. <laughs> So she was like, which one you want to see? So she said, the camera's on. And nice. Bing. Ah. Uh, that's good, though. As long as it don't cut off. <laughs> you can only hope. She's jumping around. Going to make it this. start lagging. It's like, yep, oh, that's it. That's it. Want to oh, yeah. see my face? It's my Instagram. <laughs> I'm going to just put the image right here of Sly Cooper with all her handles. Bro, I just got this. I mean, we uh, could we could do that, like if because I remember one time, uh, what was it the first time I did this with you guys? It just showed my logo, and like yeah. I was content with that. And then Pat was like, "So where's Sly? Where's she at?" And I was like, "Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, because he came in late. He did. <laughs> he like, Where is she? I'm like, because I was I was the first one here, and then you showed up." And then Kadeem was like, hey, Will, like, how you how you doing or whatever? You're like, yeah, I was, I just finished watching, you know, so-and-so's, like, comedy skit, and I was laughing so hard that I threw up. And he was like, wait. It's like, what happened? <laughs> what happened? What just happened? And then we recovered, and then Cleo joined, and then you told him what happened, and he went from, like, concerned mother look to, mm -hmm. what the fuck did you just say to me? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just every time Cleo comes in, it's so something <laughs> random as hell is being discussed. <laughs> That is also the case. Yes. Like, I think one time he popped in and we was talking about if Barbie has a butthole or not. Oh, oh I, mean, I don't know how that conversation came up, but it was a... Well, all right. Very all vivid right. conversation. Yep. So, yep, yep. so we're going to go rolling. All and, right. Uh, three. It's uh, lagging. <laughs> it's all good. It's all it's good. Just lagging. let it lag. As long as we can hear you, we straight. Okay, cool. All right. For the record, she could easily have one with, like, a paper clip point yep overthinking it but yeah if you needed her to have one is all i'm saying no no like i said i could just like really just stick no, he's talking about barbie's it. butthole <laughs> yeah he's talking about barbie's butthole oh no i wanted to move past it i didn't, I didn't like to get out of there <laughs> no more <laughs> that mm -mm. well because once we talk about it we really start talking about it and i was like oh we, that, I, I had concluded we shouldn't have been talking about this <laughs> Barbie would not appreciate what we just what we thought about at all, that. and Ken definitely wouldn't like that. Mm -mm. Ken already <laughs> got no problems. That's a fact. So, but all right, so we're gonna go in three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Straight Out of a Comic Book. I am the Anomaly Will Farrow. I have some epic guests with me today as per usual i have miss sly cooper in the building hopefully she will be able to be seen or she might have hopefully. a wizard of oz on us it's all good <laughs> of course we got mr slick living himself slick flair slick nardo dicaprio mr cleaver <laughs> thomas 
Love and it. And of course we have, man, probably I'm just I'm not just saying it because he's my homie, but like probably one of the just funny in every type of aspect you can think of. Like this man is nowhere near a one dimensional person. Like when you think you know? he's like this, you look at it and it's like did not see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> and I must watch it again. This was hilarious. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. C.T. Clayton Thomas is in the building. My Welcome, everybody. Man. I'm still stuck on Slick Nardo DiCaprio. That's fire. Slick Flair? I keep, I keep trying to find someone he's oh, telling me. Slick and Morty. We can just keep going. Bro. Slick and Morty? Keep going. I miss bro. when he used to like rattle him off at the beginning of his videos. <laughs> I did, and I realized I'm like, bro, Instagram's only giving me a minute. I can't just, <laughs> <laughs> just giving the nicknames out. We got to switch it up. Yeah. It's like, Cleo, this takes up 25 seconds. I love it, but um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it a lot, lot of, of us to hear for it. However, yeah. comma, <laughs> still got a lot to talk about from these <laughs> few. So, um, but today y'all are joining me in the first ever straight out of a comic book debate. This is a debate show, as y'all can see, with all the aesthetics that I've set up for them. This is Team CT versus Team Slick Living versus Team Sly Cooper. I have asked them to assemble what they would think would be a great group of villains. And I must say, the villainy that was chosen (laughs) is ridiculous. (laughs) Like I was putting, like we were putting these assets together and I was just like, yo, I don't, I've seen, I saw matchups, like why are these two people together? <laughs> because like, why you, not? You, yeah, like if you see <laughs> all of them and you just start thinking about things like, if, if they really decide to just come together, like there's no hope. Nope. It's, mm. it's a wrap. Like yeah, I thought of some like strong heroes to take on, I was like, nope. Because this one can get that, but then he going to give them that work. So this ain't about heroes, though. This is about villains. So um, I, I want to go around. I am going to start first with, uh, of course, Team Sly Cooper. Team Sly Cooper, are you ready to present us with your villain lineup? Ready as I will ever be. Let's get it. The floor is yours. <laughs> Tell us your lineup and why you've chosen oh, that. Okay, so first we have Naraku from Inuyasha, mm-hmm. and then we have Shinobu Sensui from Yu Yu Hakusho, mm-hmm. and then Perfect Cell from Dragon Ball Z, and then we have Carnage from you know the Marvel Universe, and then of course the Joker. Self-explanatory speaks for himself. <laughs> yes. Uh, first thoughts, uh, gentlemen, we're going to start with Cleo. First thoughts on this group of villains. I love the fact that she went from anime to comics. Mm-hmm. Uh, my immediate question is for Joker, which one is that? Mm. Mm. Is that Alan Moore's Joker? Is that New 52 Joker? Is mm. that Joaquin Phoenix's Joker? Is it Heath Ledger's? Is it Jack Nicholson? Which Joker are you going with? This man knows his stuff. Let me just throw he that He does. <laughs> ladies, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, that's, was, that's why I was like, yeah, I'm ready. I have to <laughs> and say, I this, well, was I was like, another, this was another <laughs> thing that we were discussing as we were putting these together. Would someone call out Ooh. versions of these characters? Yep. And we were really Hamill. Yeah, because we were really hesitant on what Joker to put in here. Because we were like, Okay, do we put in Heath? Do we put mm-hmm. in the triad one with all the tattoos? I was just like, mm-hmm. put in the killing joke with the camera. I was like, I don't know which one we're going to go with. So I was like, let me just put in kind of a a default Joker. But mm-hmm. Sly, he has, Joker. he has given you a question. So if you I don't like where this is going. <laughs> who is your Joker <laughs> that you're selecting? I'm leaning more towards the killing joke Joker. Mm-hmm. Because... Unless you've seen or read The Killing Joke, not a lot of people know about that specific storyline, you know, and then being Mm -hmm. raised around, you know, like comics and stuff like that, like you, regardless of 
the extent of your knowledge when it comes to the Joker, you've been exposed to the Joker. So like you have, you know, like the, the Batman animated series from when we were kids all the way up to Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. Like you you knew who the Joker was, whether you were a comic fan, a Batman fan or not. You just, it's a household name. You know who the Joker is. So to be able to like delve into something like the killing joke where that Joker gives zero fucks about anything it's like hey i'm just gonna show up to barbara's apartment shoot her in the stomach and paralyze her from the waist down because i fucking can like (laughs) and then i'm gonna knock her dad unconscious and then torture the shit out of her take pictures of her and then just straight up kidnap the commissioner (laughs) and then you know i'm I'm gonna leave her to die but she survived we're not gonna talk about that that was a mistake on my part but you know (laughs) and then I think second place would be the Joker that fucked up Jason. Well, no, you could only have one in this debate. Well, in this one. debate, it's the killing joke, but that, that close second, that toss-up was was that one. Because gotcha. that, that oh, messed sorry, me son. up. There's no, <laughs> there's no alternates in the selection of villainy. <laughs> only the strongest will survive. And I have one more question for you. You've chosen the Raku for Inuyasha. I did. Okay. As an anime fan who fell in love with Inuyasha originally, until I realized I would ever, I would never actually see them get to Naraku. They, you ne- they never got to him. Like, ever. The guy was constantly getting moved <laughs> all over the globe. What did he do? Why is he a villain? What, what did he do that was so villainous? The fact that he has indirectly and directly touched the lives of all these different characters okay. and their their mutual hatred for him and they have nothing to do with each other right. outside of their mutual hatred for him like you have what happened with Songo and Kohaku mm-hmm. and then you have what happened with Moroku and his wind tunnel and you yep. know like his was his dad and his wind tunnel it's just like an unwanted fa- like family heirloom that it's gonna kill you at the end of the day and yep. then you know it's and then on top of that right when you like watching it as a kid you're like oh they're finally gonna get him because that was that was the thing with a lot of the shows that we watched as kids between cartoons and anime you know like they're finally gonna get him just kidding this was a puppet next time on Inuyasha <laughs> never stop and then that. even even the ones who like, like with Kagura, like I love Kagura. I cosplayed as Kagura. Like Kagura is my bitch. But like, she, she worked for him, like yep. against her will because he had her heart. And every time she became defiant, he's like, "I'm just gonna give this thing just a slight squeeze, and you're gonna feel like you're about to die because you are." But then at the last minute, I'm gonna ease up, and you're gonna do what the fuck I told you to do in the first fucking place. <laughs> so. The fact that he was able to do all of that without putting himself out there and just do it all from behind the scenes, but still mess with them just as effectively as if he was there. Okay, well, pulling all the shit. Let's get brought to the to the table. All right. Well, we gotta uh, uh, ask also Clayton your thoughts on this team before we move over to uh, Cleo's pick. Let me know how you feel about Team Sly Cooper's villainous lineup. Okay, my main question is why Carnage? I like Carnage because one, he's not he's not as mainstream. You have to you have to be into the comics to know about certain characters because everybody knows about Venom now. It's not just mm-hmm. it's not just you know within our society of of blurs. You know mm-hmm, now mm-hmm. it's he has his own movie, so now everybody knows about him which isn't a bad thing but with the movie being out now everybody has like that blanket opinion of him whereas with with carnage carnage was a serial killer (laughs) right before before all of that happens like cletus was a serial killer like Mm -hmm. he killed his grandma and then like he tried to fuck with his mom and then his mom tried to kill him and then the dad walks in he's like why are you trying to kill my son and then the dad kills the mom and then he goes to testify and he was like yeah i don't know why you know dad killed mom and then the dad gets the electric chair because you know he didn't tell the truth or whatever so the fact that you know the he becomes carnage and 
it's such a like a gruesome backstory it's not just like oh wrong place at the wrong time or right place at the wrong time it's the the backstory is what does it for me and i wanted to shed some light on that nice that makes sense all right clayton you're allowed one more question for team sly cooper okay <clears throat> when we go for this set of villains which is fire i will definitely give you your credit i'm not as well versus on the first two as i am the final three but when i look at cell in his perfect form and we know his demise and we know exactly what his motivation was how does he make the list over someone like a kid boo um well this is just my opinion mm-hmm when it comes to Kid Buu, and I love Kid Buu to pieces when it came yeah. to the Budokai Tenkaichi games, like I loved playing as Kid Buu because mm-hmm. there was there was no like dialogue. It was just him screaming the whole time. He's like, I'm here to yeah. fuck shit up. <laughs> pure hatred. Just pure, pure hatred. hatred. Yeah. Such a tiny body, which was me <laughs> as a young child. But like, you know, anyway. Um, <laughs> with, with Cell, I really appreciate, you know, as a villain, I really appreciate how he's not only destructive because you you need a little bit of that you know Mm -hmm. sometimes you need to get your point across and it needs to be by force or an energy blast um but with cell he's so he's so like calculating i like when they're able to have like a thought process and it makes Mm -hmm. you wonder like huh wait a minute he might be onto something because it's you have frieza who's like man nah, i want to be immortal and like rule the galaxy and no one can stop me and i'll blow up all the planets that do you know mm-hmm. attempt to do so and then you have like you mentioned kid boo who's just like i'm just a tiny ball of hatred and i'm gonna blow everything up because shits and giggles but then you have cell who has been striving for perfection his entire mm. existence and he's like that's that's my goal is to obtain that perfection and then he's cocky but he's confident like he has he has the bark and he has the bite to back it up like with Mm. uh when it came to preparing for the tournament it's like yeah you can go off and and train you know like i'll I'll give you your your time to prepare and then we'll like put it on tv we'll broadcast it it's going to be a whole shindig it's going to be fun you know and then i'm going to wipe the floor with you and you're going to mm-hmm. wonder where you went wrong. <laughs> okay. Versus just straight up combat and just back and forth transforming. And like Frieza, Frieza is just the, the cockroach that won't die. Like, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I love, I love Frieza as a villain, but uh-huh. it's just like, bro, bring something else to the table. You know, like I, I appreciate, I appreciate the first form. The second one, the third one, the quote-unquote final form that wasn't the final form. And then the <laughs> Mecha Frieza, where he was like, hey, so like, you, see, you see what, you, what they did with Cyborg from the Teen Titans? I want that for me and my brother. <laughs> and then, like, he still gets his ass kicked. And I'm like, fam, like, WTF. And then we had Golden Frieza from Resurrection mm-hmm. F. And I was like, oh, we might be on to something. He got mm-hmm. a cool new look. You know, maybe... Maybe nah. Nope. And then and then plus you had him like with the whole, you know, Broly saga. It's like, hey, so that whole enemy of my enemy is my friend thing, when it comes mm-hmm. to just straight up villainy on that level of destruction, it's like you can't you can't do that. Like I mean you can and it mm-hmm. provides story, but it's just like I'm just gonna sit In here and talk time. shit. But Looking like, at Cell, he well. First of all, thank you for even saying that. I completely comprehend that. Uh, I hear your thought process. But when you say that about Frieza, Frieza in the Dragon Ball universe is the Joker to Goku's Batman. Right. You know, He's a necessity. Like right, you ha- right. that's why he won't die. But mm-hmm. like, and why I don't have a problem with him not dying. But yeah. still, because of and like I said, it's the common theme for the first three the solid common three for the first three is you have you have the destruction but there's a lot of intelligence Mm -hmm. that comes into play with the joker there's a lot of unpredictability which can be a good and a bad thing Mm -hmm. and then with carnage it's just like you know it's like kid boo i'm here to fuck shit up kill a whole bunch of people and then paint my name in blood and just dip the fuck out because that's my calling card (laughs) 
indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, okay, so we're going to go ahead and move on to uh, Cleo's uh, team. So, Cleo, are you ready to <laughs> – Did you see the finger, the, the, the stretch. She had to get so, Cleo, uh, let us know your group. Run them. Oh! <laughs> In the legacy of villains, there is no one more villainous than Scar. He killed his own brother. Moments later, he put a hit out on his own nephew. The guy is evil personified. So, we'll start there. Let's move on to Azula. The most calculated, she had been blessed since birth to be as great as she is. She's a prodigy. She is a firebending prodigy. It was supposed to be Zuko, Lil Zuzu. She has <laughs> one issue. She's completely batshit crazy, completely. She's got some issues that she needs to work on. She hears things, she sees things. She's got some internal struggles going on with her, which I feel makes her more dangerous because who would want to battle her in that moment? We saw what happened when she fought uh, Zuko in the final Agni Kai. It took Katara to come and freeze her ass in order for her to chill out. And then, well, he, in my opinion, that it was kind of a whack way for that battle to end. It's so cheating. Zuko, it was cheating. Zuko it was tri- she cheated. <laughs> it was cheating. Like, just call it what it is. It was cheating. Like, yeah. He had no reason to step up there. That was a proper Agni Kai between Zuko and Azula. And here go Katara having to come in and ruin the whole thing. But whatever. She's still a very dangerous villain. Everything that Sly said about Cell, I 100% agree with. You have Frieza, you got Majin Buu, you have uh, other Saiyans who come down. You got Raditz, Raditz. you had the original Vegeta when he came, you had Nappa. Uh, Nappa. There's several villains that we've seen in the Dragon Ball universe, but there's something about Cell specifically that just stands out to me all these years. I remember Mm -hmm. watching the Cell Games uh, story arc on on, uh, Toonami, and I was just like, bruh, this dude is that real. He (laughs) let them go train. Yeah. Stayed there waiting for them to come back just to whoop their ass. He was no joke, bro. Cell is a top tier S class villain, if you ask me. Um, moving on to Queen Mira. For the Gears of War fans, Queen Mira's backstory, when we finally got it after all these damn video games, is no joke either. They tested on her, they tried to make the perfect hybrid, and then there was poison, uh, emotion that made her into say, you know what, F it. I'm just gonna run the sub uh, colony underneath Earth and then I'm gonna get us all riled up and then there will be E-Day, Emergence Day. Mm -hmm. They ruined Earth, ruined it. They all came from underground and then you was at war for the next couple years, but no one could put their freaking hands on Mira because you couldn't get to her. Mm -hmm. She was calculated, she ran every single thing the proper way and made it happen. She did come to her demise in the storyline, but that's okay, I still appreciate Queen Mirror for what she gave to the Gears of War mythos. And finally, Calypso. Mm. I've mm. talked about this. I just Ooh. went on a rant recently about Calypso. No one considers Calypso from Pirates of the Caribbean a villain. I do. <laughs> I do. Because she didn't keep her word. Okay? Tap your chest <laughs> again. Love. Right. It was about Davy Jones. But you know how pirates are. They love the sea. That's what they care for. I don't give a shit about nothing else. Give me a boat, give me a crew, and give me the... The sea. That's all they care about. (laughs) This woman was the embodiment of a sea goddess. Davy Jones, the most feared pirate in all of the seas, fell in love with this beautiful dreadlock, Rasta Queen. Right? She let it be known. You want me? No problem. I got a job for you, though. Ten years at the mass. I need you ten years out there on that ocean. I need you to ferry all of the souls. Take care of that. I'll see you in 10 years when you get back. And when you get back, the WAP waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> the WAP, say, Cleo? <laughs> 10 years. I don't say it. 10 years. He was out there. Did everything she asked. And when he came back, she wasn't there. So he did effort. He went back out on land. But before he went, he got his revenge. He said, you know what? Hey, y'all want to know how to go ahead and take away her powers? Y'all want to really rule the sea? Yo, boom, boom, boom. Let me get that piece. Boom, 
nine pieces of eight, done, done deal, no more powers. Now she's just trapped in her body. Done deal, human body. She still has some powers because she brought back uh, uh, um, man, Captain Barbosa. <laughs> she put that thing on Captain Barbosa. She put that thing on Captain Jack Sparrow too. So she had been tossing where she could, but she wanted one nigga. She wanted one guy, and of course it was uh, Davy Jones. So finally it came face to face with him after all these years. And what was her, what was her actual response to the reason why? That she wasn't there when she said she'd be there 10 years later? What was her response? What was the response? It's in my nature. <laughs> I can't help it. You can't, it's in your nature. I can't help it. What? <laughs> Pirates got killed for years over this woman not keeping her word. Davy Jones became a madman out there on that sea. I'm riling up all these. I'm taking out that shit. You want to live or die? Live or die. All right, cool. You got to do 10 years above my match. Live or die. Dead? Kill them off. She the reason. And then when they finally brought her back to life, she grew 100 feet tall and turned into a bunch of crabs and went right back in the sea. Davy Jones still went and did what she said. He was whipped all these years off of that walk. And when he finally got killed, what did he do? He looked to the sky and said, Calypso, rain on me. And got washed away in a tsunami and a tidal wave. So at the end of the day, he got what he wanted. He still dove in deep to something wet. But the point is. Hey. <laughs> hey. Dive hey. in like Trey Songz. <sighs> Calypso is the ultimate villain of Pirates of the Caribbean, if you ask me. There's my five. All right. Cleo, let me let me say something to you right now, brother. If nothing else, I love you for that performance. Do you understand? Oh yes, <laughs> right. Get in the air. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, yes. Oh, you had me at the chest max. That's right I there. Forgot what he was doing for a second. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about this enough. We don't. <gasps> How do we ignore what this woman did? <laughs> How do we not talk about so being the evil villain? Oh, the franchise. 10 that, years wow. he came mm. back she wasn't there damn low key nigga that's Ooh. the Davy Jones is Thanos <laughs> Thanos took his life he was like yo I'm trying to get that dead wop yeah, I'm right. trying to hop on they're like yo you you can get that old you can get that ocean pussy you ever had dead pussy <laughs> the original dead pussy Boy, the original. I'll kill half this universe for that dead wop <laughs> Yeah, have this whole universe with that. Yeah. <laughs> what you want to do for me? Snap. That's what I'm putting on. That's my team, bro. You oh. know, that's one. Everyone's so calculated. <laughs> Everyone yeah. except except Calypso. We're just gonna give Calypso power. No, she yeah. is cal no. No, she's I would say she's calculating. I don't think she was calculating because she didn't plot Not on as Davey calculated. She didn't plot on Davy Jones being as pissed off and wanting some revenge to make sure that they could lock her ass up in human form. She couldn't calculate that shit. Yeah, but think about <laughs> oh. it though. Look, look what she did to get that back. <laughs> yeah, she she, she did. yes, of course, yes. Cause she who, cause, cause, yeah. Because there's also a theory that says she's the cause of all of that. I agree. She's the main villain, but that's Team Sleek Living Villains, man. Scar, Azula, Cell, Queen Mira, and that sea goddess wench, Calypso. Okay. So, uh, uh, CT, we're going to start with you. Give you two questions hey. to ask for Team He Sleek. made me choke, bro. Okay. Uh, hold on. <laughs> you know it's real when you got to take the glasses off. <laughs> God, man. <laughs> Oh, I'm Feel telling that. you, the first would time I got to move this uh, chest, bro. What'd you say? Would you like us to move to Sly Cooper while you recoup? <laughs> Please go to Sly Cooper. <laughs> Sly Cooper. <laughs> You'll get two questions to talk about. Oh, man. First of all, Will, I know we could go after like regular animation. I'm mad at you for that because I would have chosen Zula too. But still, you know, mm. I forgive I you. We still friends. We still I don't know how friends. the word anywhere did not like give you <laughs> over go it. wherever you want. Went everywhere else. Um <sighs> It's okay if you don't have a question because yeah, this you is can choose. Yeah, I don't I don't really have it's questions. It's just, list. You could like, choose I'm, you could give I'm, back your time. As they say on the floor, I give back my time and we could go to CT. It's a bulletproof list, if you ask me. But CT, any questions? 
I can't lie, brother. I'm not just doing this to do it. That was the way he sold it. It's a solid list. Right. Uh, explain everything. <laughs> the I whole only presentation. Have the one complaint, and you'll see why in a second. Go ahead, uh, good brother Farrell. <clears throat> so we're gonna go ahead and move on to Team CT. Um, and Damn you, slick lemon. Talk about it. <laughs> so here you are. In the exact place that I had my oh, scar. Wow. <laughs> right, the same place that I had myself. <laughs> Damn it. Okay. First and foremost, guys, you see Scar. He's right there in all of his glory. If you don't know why Scar, everything that Cleo said. However, we have to add the fact that he had a low-key baby, one of them lionesses, and he tried to low-key wife up his brother's wife after he murdered his own brother. That right there should never go unnoticed. We're going to say that. Uh, Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor is a villain that is that is spread across more than just his own Earth. He's spread across multiple universes, made deals with Darkseid and other sentient beings in order for ultimate control. He's never looked at himself if he was doing anything wrong. He saw himself as the Superman in the story and Superman being the villain. And that kind of mental capacity for any man to only want to make the world better, but in his image, not seeing any fault in his ways is the most diabolical villain of all time in my opinion he even enlisted he even enlisted the joker trying to work with the joker and knowing that this guy's completely mad but saw the greater good in getting batman and superman out of the equation to do that is just patience and brilliance we have ebon from static shock ebon is the one villain of Static Shock that never gets the credit that he deserves, although he's the strongest of them all. He's the complete opposite of Static Shock. He controls shadows and darkness, where Static Shock needs light, electricity, all these things. Um, when Static Shock uh, got his powers and with everybody else getting their powers in Dakota City with the Big Bang, the Big Bang created Static Shock in a sense of, man, I'm already a nice guy. I want to help people. This amplifies who I am. It also amplified Ebon. Ebon wasn't so much as just an evil guy. Ebon was raised on the wrong sides of the tracks. He was the guy with the record. He was the guy that was always looked at as uh, less than and poor and never had enough. So he saw all these other villains with broken wings. <clears throat> and wanted to give them homes as well. But him giving them homes, he approached his villainy the way that we compare Martin Luther King and Malcolm X, whereas Malcolm was more peaceful and nonviolent. And Malcolm was like, no, we need to show them why they need to fear us and why they need to respect us. And that's how Ebon went about using his powers and enlisting the help of others. <clears throat> Goddamn you, Cleo. Anyway, so that's what happened with Ebon. <laughs> Ebon was fire. I loved it. He even tried to recruit Static by telling him, this is what I want for us. This is what we could be. Why don't you just join us? They don't care about us. And he's like, uh, I hear you, but right is right and wrong is wrong, and I'm going to take you down. And at no point did he ever successfully beat Ebon. Ebon always retreated on his own because he's like, you're not ready to fight me, and left. For a okay. villain to have you every single time and say you're not ready and leave that's going to be a true fight when he does decide that you are ready the reverse flash the reverse flash is probably right under lex luthor for me because he hates the flash so much that he copied his exact exact origin of his powers to copy and give himself powers to go back in time and kill the flash and so in doing so going back to kill his own mother to try and destroy him while respecting him enough to know that he's important to becoming the flash so he could still become the reverse flash that's the only reason that he allows things to go to the way they are also he's always been a lone wolf but has always been open to working with others at the greater good of destroying not only the flash but the justice league to benefit his own efforts he's never wanted world domination but he has always wanted absolute power rita repulsa rita repulsa used to be a Power Ranger. Outside of her used to being a Power Ranger, working with Zordon, she found that she could usually continue her, or she could continue her own sorcery and by going out on her own and trying to take down Zordon because she didn't like his methods about going to protect anything. So in doing so, she held on to her remaining green power coin and created her own evil Green Ranger. Not only did she turn a teenager with an attitude into a bigger teenager with an attitude, she saw fit to use her own abilities and teach that man how to beat a group of superheroes who are already doing it before he was even trying to be one. Then Rita saw, uh, I'm not 
powerful enough. I think I would have the respect of the universe and even wider of a reach if I joined forces with Lord Zed by so drugging him into loving her so she could marry him so they could be the most feared people amongst many galaxies. All the while trying to destroy the Power Rangers. She went so far as to try and break up families within the Power Rangers. She tried to destroy their friendships, their relationships, but she always fell short. But at the same time, she never fell short when she went directly at Zordon. Going to try and get him through Alpha or trying to get the Rangers to tear down Zordon. So she wasn't successful in beating the Power Rangers, but she's beaten Zordon several times. And that is my five. All righty. Uh, Team Slick Living. Yes, I, I would have to say. Round of applause to these all of these. Teams. On these um, so I would like to hear from if, if Team Slick Living or Team Slack Cooper, is there any questions that you would like to have for CT or would you like to uh, give that time back? I have a question for, for Rita Repulsa. All right. Okay. She is, I, I, this is news to me that she was once a Power Ranger. Oh, yeah. I yeah. had no idea about that. I believe Kadeem had, my brother Kadeem had informed me that you are a big Power Ranger mythos. Oh, yeah. I wanted to one day talk about how the fact that Tommy, the Green Ranger, mm -hmm. why did we as children <laughs> just leave the Red Ranger high and dry? Why did we say that guy needs to be the leader now? And we all fell and followed suit with this. Why? I know exactly why. Yeah. Bishop. Magic Don Juan, <laughs> green for the money, gold for the honey. I was like, you know what? That's why he need to be the leader. You know what I'm saying? Red, you too mad. You running around everywhere. Then he had a dagger flute. That didn't make sense. Fire. He wasn't even blowing it. He just Fire. and then this dude had an old dragon come out the water. I was like, own Zord. Yeah. I was like, look, presentation is everything, and yep. he done it on every ranger coming out the gate i'll tell you why cleo first of all oh god the fact that you had scar and that you asked me that specific question shows how much we have in common brother because let me answer your question Hit me with it i too felt the exact same way i respect jason david frank and the green rangers impact becoming a white ranger all of that good stuff but i am so disrespected for austin st john and what he brought us because power rangers was a massive hit before the green ranger even got there and i think the green ranger coming in was one of those uh us seeing basically a shiny nickel but i'll also give you this for boys this is what they don't realize when they're creating superheroes and love interests. As boys, we want to be the strong guy and we want to get the girl. Or, you know, whoever you're into, you might want the guy. You know, I'm not saying that conversation. I'm just saying that as little boys, when that came out, we wanted to be the guy who was cool and got the girl. Unfortunately, Jason didn't have a love interest. He didn't even get a love interest until he came back in Zeo. So when Tommy came in, the Pink Ranger, who seems like she was the hot girl at school and the cheerleader and all of this, she was so popular. She liked the boy we wanted to be the boy she likes and then that boy actually uh is an incredible martial artist he has his own zord it's a different color and he could beat all the power rangers by himself that's why we looked at tommy and then the fact that he got made the leader of course outside of the contractual issues that they dealt with oh, well, the leader right with the one we can't even bring out because the people don't but uh it was one of those things where jason's method of leading was guys get up we got to beat this guy. I'm not going home with a loss. And Tommy was like, hey, guys, if we just believe in ourselves, we can get there. The and power of like, friendship. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so the power of friendship ended up going to billions of dollars in toy sales. And then they were like, oh, well, if we got this guy, we don't need this other guy. And they threw him out like that. But he never received the credit that he deserves, the Red Ranger. And thank you for asking it. I have often said it. That is a great breakdown. I always wondered, and now that, that really wraps that, that entire thing up. <laughs> it wasn't until I got older, I'm like, why did we leave the Red Ranger high and dry like that? High and dry, bro. He, he was the guy. Like, yo, the Red Ranger had the Tyrannosaurus Rex uh, uh, Zord, and then when it transformed, he was the chess piece and the head piece. That was yeah. fire. He, Tommy had his own the theme voice. song. They gave him a theme song, and I was like, Jason, don't get a theme song, bro? Nope. They made they made the Green Ranger too OP though, bro. He whooped oh, yeah. all the asses in the actual cockpit. Then the Green Ranger Tommy went on to be the White Ranger. <sighs> he was just OD, bro. Yeah, OD. it was crazy. That was so as a kid, and let me tell you something. <laughs> 
the first time I met Austin St. John, I literally gave him a hug because I'm like, bro, we didn't appreciate you, man. And he just started <laughs> laughing. <laughs> I love it, bro. But the fact that he's been brought back several times, I believe he was the Black Ranger with the gold joint, right? He was the gold ranger at Zio. They brought him back, which was incredible because not only did he get more yoked, but we were like, yo, we like this guy better than Tommy. And when they felt that, they got rid of that gold ranger. Because yep. they, they got rid of him. Yeah, really, that oh, real quick. Ah, uh, ah, uh, no, we ain't doing that. They cut that smooth off. I remember that storyline. I said, "How does come about?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, we good on that. Uh, Team Cy Cooper. Any any questions for Team CT? I'll give my time. That was I'm that was a great great presentation. I'm I'm here Thank for you. all of it. All right, then. So there, y'all have it. We have the teams. Uh, these lists of villains. So uh, this this is uh, for those that don't know. This is going to be uh, broken down into more than just one debate sh show. So just to let y'all know, I will bring y'all back into a second part of this debate because this is epic. So I think just different lines of questionings for these teams and stuff would be dope. Like having some of them killed off and replaced. Like I think this is something we can really work into as a series. And I would love to have y'all three for this for the villainous debate. So. One question I'm going to go ahead and get into. I'm gonna Cleo, do, what are you doing? I'm going to figure minutes. out if, if I'm trying to figure out, do our scars cancel out and do me and you cells <laughs> Our cells. <laughs> yeah. Well, depending on how you structure it and how you decide you want to go about it, because uh, based off of those two things, you have actually three different versions of scar. You mm. also have several different versions of cell, even in its perfect form. So it's mm. How you choose and their mentality. So mm. keep that in mind. So I'm gonna give you two minutes to uh, strategically decide how you're going to explain this. Uh, your answer to this first question with your teams. You're welcome to have an open discussion. I will just. Uh, 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 it's up to y'all. So the question is based off of your team of villainy. Create their diabolical plan to take over the world. How would they do it? And who would be in charge of what? Or depending on just how you want to explain it. And then two, also remember that they have their heroes to deal with as well. But we'll start off with their plan. So I will give you two minutes on the clock. You are welcome to think, strategize, and try to figure it out. Hmm. I don't even need that much time. Well, listen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Calypso is just going to smitten every man on the battlefield. <laughs> so there goes all the firepower from inside and their crew. Done deal. So Joker's done. Sale's done. Carnage is done. Reverse Flash is done. Ebon's done. Lex Luthor is done. <laughs> Not sure about Scar. Not sure about Scar. Queen Mira definitely going to attack from the bottom half using all of her uh, the minions as far as the Locust goes from Emotion Day, E-Day. I'll let Cell take care of Kamehameha waving the entire battlefield. Leave Azula to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat anybody on this map. Anybody. And I'll leave Scar and Scars to just fight each other. Like, we'll just see who makes it out. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so, we, so we have an array of just world attacks. This isn't no strategic thing. It's just kind of like we in the group. We know what it is. Let's go at it. So right. based off of that logic, for Team CT and teams, uh, a Team Sly Cooper, I'm going to start the clock. I would like for you to rebuttal off of his plan and to let me know if, let's say, for instance, your diabol the this is interrupting your diabolical plan, would your team be able to stop them from what his battle has been, uh, what he's just said? I'll, uh, I'll try and take that first. Uh, absolutely, because the person that I have on my team is the main strategist of all time. Lex Luthor is not going to try and fight fire with fire. What Lex Luthor is going to try and do is try and get to Calypso and try and actually talk to her and have her come to his side if they can work out a side deal. Outside of them working out a side deal, they're definitely going to try and get Sale to turn on his team. If he could turn on his team, that way they can offer an incentive for them to get the other Sale knocked out. The, I agree with the scar on on Scar thing, but Lex Luthor is our main strategist. And plus we have Reverse Flash. Reverse Flash, outside of speed, has his intellect to where he's more prone to go for the winning team. And if he can't win on the team he's on, he's going to try and also jump ship. But after Lex Luthor has explained his plan to circumvent pretty much Team Sly Cooper, because Slick Limit's team 
has Calypso. So that's the main person that he's going to have to worry about because that's the biggest threat. So as long as he has Calypso, they could easily knock out Team Sly Cooper and then take Sale to knock out the rest of the Team Slick Living if they don't uh, adhere to their, not demands, but if they go against the agreement that they made. Okay. Um, Team Slick Living, do you have a rebuttal for what Team C- uh, CT has just stated on your uh, strategy of attack? Hey, man, he's got Luthor. And if you know, <laughs> Luthor that's been known, that man has a silver tongue and he knows how to manipulate. Yeah. He is the ultimate strategist. At the same time, he also has Reverse Flash, mm-hmm. who's freaking, and that's Eobar Thawne, right? That's Eobar Thawne. Yeah, I, those are the two ones that I have to do with. It's not even about firepower. It's not even about, you know, a, a one-on-one fight, strategic mind games. Mm-hmm. The psychology of these two alone is going to be a battle to deal with. They can make anyone down there do whatever the hell they want. Because yes, so, he's coming to her like, what can I do for you? What do you really want out of this? And that's dangerous. Yeah. Well, so, hey, at the end of the day, then it just becomes Calypso taking over this entire map. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. The winner of all, everything else. Yeah. That's maybe dependent. So we, so I want y'all to save those things too because we will talk strategy in another round when we go about kind of breaking down y'all diabolical plans when y'all mm. come up against each other. Villain mm-hmm. group versus villain group. But Sly Cooper, do you have a rebuttal for uh, Team Slick Living's battle of attack? Because they, they kind of shitting on you right now. Like, oh, we ain't, we ain't worried about this. Like, <laughs> I was like, oh, I mean, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Bold of you to assume you're not attacking puppets since we have Naraku, but you know. <laughs> it's be a spirit, a little head, or a puppet for Naraku. The Yukon <laughs> villain, I don't even recall what he's really up to. Carnage is a whole symbiote. Who, Sensui? I don't remember all what from Yu Hakusho. I really don't. D- uh, mm. He was the, the spirit the detective before Yusuke. He's, he was the human that wanted to destroy all humans <laughs> in that game. I gotta go back and watch you. It's been years, so I gotta go check that one out. Carnage is a whole symbiote who's stronger than Venom. Um, mm. well, he is his son. Technically. Yeah, every every mm-hmm. symbiote who has a child, the child is always the stronger of the two. Right. And then we gotta deal with Joker, who's just a madman. I mean, listen, the, spoiler alert: the DC Comics have just released today or yesterday. Finally, they're getting into the three Joker storyline. What first? Mm-hmm. first First issue out, spoiler alert, Jason Todd puts a bullet in the Joker's head. Finally! Yep. <laughs> Finally! <laughs> oh, God, it so doesn't long. take much to kill the guy. Jason Todd did it. So I'm not worried about Joker. I'm not. Leave Queen Mira to snipe him from across the map. I'm good on my <laughs> Okay, man. Well, Sly, I guess you better... You have to come with this strategy on yours. So we see how, how how Team Slick Living is looking towards Team Sly Cooper, not really phased by them or anything on their team. Um, I guess the only sleeper he'd really be concerned about is Cell, maybe Carnage. Uh, Slick Living is concerned a lot about Team CT's uh, lineup, especially with having Reverse Flash mm. and Lex Luthor as he should. So I am going to move it over to uh, either Team CT or Team Sly Cooper. Which one of you would like to go about your di- uh, diver- uh, giving us your diabolical plan? Uh, Sly Cooper. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in my opinion, I feel like with my team, there's going to be an enslavement of the human race because outside of the Joker, since we being a human hates humans uh, because of his whole backstory. So I'm, I'm excited to come back to this after Cleo, if he decides to go back and watch <laughs> what yeah. happens with uh, since we and what his whole uh game plan is so with Sensui it's pretty much long story short uh, he was he saw the world in black and white he saw demons is bad and humans is good humans it's like we fuck up here and there but it's not really it's nothing off the wall and crazy so he had that was his his uh, way of thinking when it came to his his moral compass and then one day Koenma dispatches him you know, right away on this mission, he shows up and sees all of these humans torturing and enslaving and doing all these horrible, gruesome things to demons. 
and it completely fucks up his mentality and the way he saw the world. He snaps and kills everybody in the room, human and demons alike, and in order for him to cope with the traumatic event that just occurred, he, his psyche kind of just breaks, and he ends up creating seven different split personalities within himself. And so whenever he goes out and does other, you know, diabolical stuff, instead of, you know, like having that moment where it's like, wow, I really just went out here and, and killed these people and, you know, taking on the weight of that responsibility, he kind of shifts it to one of his personalities, like one of them, um, I think only four of them uh, get their names like disclosed in the anime, but one of them is pretty much like, carnage where it's like i'm here to fuck shit up and i don't care you know who gets their feelings hurt or gets physically hurt in the process so all of that guilt and negative emotion gets shifted to that personality because he can just brush it off he doesn't care versus if it got shifted to one of his more you know like sensitive personalities where it's like oh wow we uh we did some stuff and now we get to feel bad um (laughs) but because of how cold and calculating he is just like a couple other ones that are mentioned um with his with his uh his power level he's equivalent to that of an s class demon which is like the top god tier of the demon power scale and he's able to harness i think it's called sacred energy instead of spirit energy which surpasses what even genkai was capable of and the fact that genkai was yusuke's teacher that that kind of puts into perspective like where they are on like the the power scale i guess you could say so he may not be as powerful as you know like some some other characters that are mentioned but i don't even know how you would really classify you know characters from a show like dragon ball to the class level of that of yu yu haka show but based off of what the anime series gives us um it's it's pretty up there because it's very insane you're gonna have to watch the fight scenes there's lots of explosions lots of okay. lots of all that stuff um, that would that was your two minutes slot <laughs> <laughs> talking about Yu Yu Hakusho. Which I wanted to, because everybody's, for the most part, is familiar with everybody else on the team. I wanted to really shine some light on when it comes to. I, I hope that's the dude you not shining on to for your diabolical plan, because if it was to put us to sleep, yeah, you won. <laughs> you won. <laughs> but what is the all around plan for all these villains? Like, if they all came together and they're like, yo, this is what we doing. Joker's killing them all. Joker's right, it was like the, the human race is being like, enslaved, mind, I, and anybody that goes against the grind is getting killed. Exactly. Okay, the so, fail, that, so the fail-safe plan is either Sensui is gonna break the barrier between the human and the demon world, and the demons are just gonna overrun and take the, take over the place and just kill everybody, or Cell's gonna blow up the planet. Okay, so we got enslaved Earth with a gateway open to hell and a mega spirit bomb on standby <laughs> in case somebody tries something. Kamikaze cell, got it. Okay, so <laughs> with that, team T, I'm gonna start with team CT. Team CT, you now know that plan. Thoughts on that and how to combat that with your team? Uh, the thoughts on I, I, and I, I almost want to apologize for going such so in depth before about dismantling a team because the it still remains the same. Like as far as that is concerned, my first thing would also just be super speed you super speed somebody in a situation like that before they're able to give the go order then bam you have it kind of able to stop however uh the next question is how we is about my diabolical plan so i'm gonna stop right there okay all right just to be smart He's choosing to hold it back. That's a very smart tactic from Team CT. Team Slick Living, do you have a rebuttal or would you like to give back your time? You have both options. Uh, good on my time, man. I'm, I'm confident in my team. I think that I know what my plan is going to be moving forward. I think I got each one of them in place, so I'm good. All right, then. Okay, well. Uh, when is your birthday, Cleo? January 30th. Uh, what is that? Aquarius. Ah. 
I was thinking Capricorn or Pisces, then I was like, ah, oh, but it's right. like, we got too much in common <laughs> for your birthday to be so far away from mine. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Burr. No, it's all good, man. Uh, so, Team CT, you are left. Give us your diabolical plan. All right. Uh, the one thing we haven't considered with all three teams is the fact that although we see ourselves a certain way, we have not gotten rid of our immediate threat who would be thwarting us all, which is our counterparts, our heroes. So the first thing that we would automatically think with ego is, oh, I'll take care of my hero. But it's like you're not realizing you've never taken care of your hero. The only thing that has ever defeated a hero has been another villain catching them off guard. So in a situation like that, uh, that's where Lex Luthor would try and even a playing field while serving his own interest in taking down the villains one and the same, which would be, hey, guys, let's all get together. Yes, we all have this plan that we want to beat each other. However, let's work together for a moment. Tell me about each of you guys' heroes. Tell me their weaknesses. How far have you gotten before and why weren't you able to finish the job? At that point, he would dispatch separate people to deal with that hero, catching them off guard. Like, it's nothing for Rita Repulsa to deal with Simba of the Lion King. It's nothing for Reverse Flash to deal with Sales Goku because of the speed. It's nothing for... Uh, the Joker to be dealt with with someone like Ebon because he's not expecting that power. So situations like that to put down each of our uh, prospective heroes after that's done, now he's knowing exactly how to stop the villains that wouldn't join his side before. So my evil plan once we have our heroes dispatched of would be to then get Cell and get Calypso and that way we win the entire battle. The Joker really isn't of any consequence because the Joker can't be trusted even on his own team. So it's one of those things where you just need to, like Cleo said as far as the comic spoiler, shoot him in the head, which the greater good is always at a, never a stake when you do something like that from a villain. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. And the, the final answer of that question would be, uh, what is the exact goal? The exact goal for Lex Luthor's team is not only world it's not so much as world domination but everybody will be able to get their own part of the world you keep the east section we keep the south you guys stay out of the north we all have our own territories that way when we come together to make a world decision we can but everybody has their own area to where we shouldn't interfere with each other's laws dang so you got like the united states of luther you got <laughs> south ebon mm -hmm. you got uh Raposia. That's it. <laughs> Raposia. Oh, uh, and then you got Reversica. All right. Up, up, up. <laughs> Reversica. Well, of course, you know the reverse flash from Africa. <laughs> For some reason. That's what he Reversica. called first. <laughs> yeah, boy, was not, was not happy about that. Reversica. He needed to put that pin on the map. All right, which share I tell you I won't? <laughs> <laughs> and it's that. It's like every single time I've ever so seen. Darts. <laughs> the Legion of Doom get together every time I've seen any sub uh, villain because it's the Legion of Doom and the Injustice League. You would always see them say, all right, we need our own territories. They were never so much as saying, I want the world to be apes unless it was Grodd. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They literally wanted to be left alone to their own devices in different parts of the world. So I am. Right. Right. Uh, team Slick Living, we'll start with you. Do you have any rebuttal to this question or... <laughs> Team CT for sure is able to get his entire team to accept the fact that, yo, you can have north, south, east, and west. Mm. Already with that logic, that's not going to fly with mine because Azula wants it all. <laughs> uh, Mira wanted the planet. She went underground and was able to get all the locusts together and then took over the entire planet and was at war for years with them. Calypso, yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I get my team to get on the same page at all. I think eventually it's only going to be one true winner to rule everything. I don't think it's going to be Azula. I don't think it's going to be Scar. I don't think it's going to be Cell. I have to. Un Queen Mira. I I'll put it, Queen Mira end up taking over and being the one true leader of the entire globe. She's gonna. Everyone will plot how they're supposed to. Um, C CT's plan of of Luthor going after other villains instead of them taking on their own joints uh let's see like let's see so who's gonna oh. come and try to take out azulas yeah that's never gonna happen yeah we gotta deal with ang so who mm -hmm. would deal with ang from azula 
Uh, I'm gonna put Cell to go take care of Aang. Mm. Go, go, go fight that, bro. Get that battle out the way. Mm. I'll send Azula to go kill Mufasa again. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, or Scar. Or uh, Scar. Or, I mean, yeah. Or uh, Scar. He could just, yeah, yeah, he could succeed again at it. Uh, Scar, I'm gonna send to go and, oh, like, who's the villain? Of, who could be the anti? Who's the anti uh, Calypso? Is it Jack? Is mm. it Davy Jones? Or is it. All the pirates. I feel like it's David Jones. David, you can you can make a case for all the pirates, but I think it's David Jones. Well, they just say the pirate the pirate league. It gets you, pirate. really like she don't like none of the pirates. So like it's my association, <laughs> just all of them. Yeah, like she really was low key like that. She was like, "Yo, I said screw all y'all." Bruh, they really was at the pirate cove. Like, yo, release her. Like, yeah. What? Yeah. Like, let's not. Let's not yeah. do that. So I'm gonna. I, I, we got to figure out how to take them out. But yeah, at the end, that's my plan as far as trying to take over the world collectively. And then at the end of the day, they're never going to get along. They all want it. It's, they're way too power hungry amongst them all. Mm -hmm. And I would hope that Queen Mira comes out on top, just being able to plot enough. Because we've seen Calypso be trapped in a human form. Cell's been destroyed before. Mm -hmm. Scar got offed by hyenas. And Azula has been put in shackles. Mm. Right. How cold was Simba to not have even had the demise of Scar? He got the hyenas to do it. Keep going, Will. I'm sorry. I'm gonna, huh? look, I'm gonna get your own. It be your own people. That's what that really started. <laughs> oh, he <laughs> was just like that. He was just. He stealed his <laughs> own feet. He was like, it wasn't me. It was the hyenas. The hy he was like, man, we hungry. Bonsai and Ed looking like this. <laughs> I fed that. Y'all the ones ate everything up. Oh, bro. and you didn't want to go hunt. You you mm. saw the grass turn brown. Y'all didn't mm. say nothing. <laughs> and now y'all want to eat your boy. We did a whole musical number. Not a whole. <laughs> Be That's what it is. Get him out of there, bro. Poor Scar. Sly oh. Cooper, you got anything for Team CT's diabolical plan? I do not. <laughs> yo, yo, you. I'm not. I'm just throwing this out there. Not, not saying anything. But I will definitely give my keynotes before we wrap this up. <laughs> um, what I have learned from from these three, they first of all, all three teams are uh, amazing, very diabolical. Uh, mm. One thing I have learned first, I'll start off with T Team CT. Um, what most people are sleeping on is the fact that he yet to mention Ebon. Oh yeah, Dark. He, if he like, really like, let, let, let's just say as far as strategy wise. He has definitely put Lex Luthor and Reverse Flash at the front yeah. of the gate, mm -hmm. which is still a huge thing. But you also too have Ebon, Rita, a source, a sorceress, mm -hmm. and then Scar, a vicious lion, mm -hmm. in the back. Mm -hmm. And not only that, they've taken out their heroes, so all they really have to do, and and most likely after that's gone, world domination is upon them, and, and, and any other thing. But now also has the capability to control time. Um, and just mm -hmm. a sidebar, uh, we have a, we, uh, the arcade tokens, we have a podcast where we were talking about which Marvel and Flash characters we would be. Um, our arcade tokens, brethren, Patrick, um, I really don't think is, is factoring in just how dangerous reverse Flash is. <laughs> like, he keeps yeah. going back to like, he's not creative because he just reversed his suit. I'm like, this dude is a psychopath. <laughs> Yeah. With speed. And hate speed. your guts. Yeah. And he works out of the negative speed force. Like he has his own speed force. The the flashes, well, I can't just say the flashes, but every speedster operates out of the positive speed force. So the fact that the reverse flash created his own speed oh, force that wow. comes out of hate energy is powerful because everybody has a finite amount of hate in them. It's just about how much you choose to access. And this brother unlocked the matrix. You know how much social media is feeding into that negative speed? <laughs> <laughs> this nigga is the fastest man in the goddamn universe. <laughs> There's no stopping him now. Right. Uh, that's how I saw Team CTs. But on, on the plus side, Team Slick Livens, I believe, like, now he did say it was going to be hard to strategize them. I, I slightly disagree. Mm. I, and this, again, these are just my notes. I believe you do have a collective a group of people that can still get everything they want and work on the same scale. As for instance, I always forget her name. What's the girl from The Last Airbender? Azula. 
Azula and Queen Mira. I believe because once again, Queen Mira wouldn't necessarily have to take over the top. Mm-hmm. If she left Azula the top and Queen Mira runs the bottom, both in a simultaneous thing to where they can work together, that takes care of them. Calypso only really wants the C. Mm. Leave the C to her. You have kind of the same strategy as you could do with CT as well as Cell. Cell just want to fight. So mm-hmm. let Cell fight. Let Cell take on all of them. And if he wants to be the kamikaze that ends your team, let him do it. And Scar, <laughs> Scar got a whole thing of hyenas ready to go. And mind you, the only dude that out of all of these low-key has killed off his uh, protagonist. Like, yo, I want him and he went. Since Woo. we killed Deepsuke, I mean, like, his ancestral blood, like, brought him back. But I mean, like, he killed him. It happened. <laughs> and, it wasn't uh, permanent, but, like... <laughs> He had plot armor. Come on. <laughs> if, if there's always got to be a team of misfits. Like you, I feel like you put together a, a, a suicide squad without an Amanda Waller. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like you, you, you got enough crazy in a bunch to do something. Mm-hmm. But what they going to do is just kind of up to them. That's what I've kind of noticed. Because even a dude from uh, Yu Yu Hakusho could just be like, Man, I don't need none of y'all. And dip. Mm-hmm. And dip. Mm-hmm. Same thing that can be said for Joker. Cell is actually working with both teams, so it's kind of like, okay, <laughs> I can jump back and forth and really dip. And mm-hmm. then uh, in Yuyasha, like again, he he's playing the background, so we don't know exactly what his powers contain, what he might be in the playing field. But again, too, this is all based off of strategy, how y'all know these people's powers, because there's a lot of magic in teams like Cooper that can really put a grip on all of y'all, because there is no thing that says reverse flash is uh, uh, invincible from magic. So that right. also uh, interrupt his speed. Same thing with Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor might switch over and come mess with, with the crazies. We never know. <laughs> but that is what is left to the three of you and this miraculous team that y'all have put together. So please keep strategizing these two. I will always, uh, I want to try to do this, uh, if not each week, every other week. So we can keep coming with these. I will have y'all with the topic questions so y'all can come well prepared with y'all strategies. How y'all gonna answer this? Because this is a real debate. Mm. Team CT, Team Slick Living, Team Sly Cooper, the straight out of a comic book debate is on whose team will come out on top. I wanna thank my guest, Cleo Thomas, Clayton Thomas, two, two, two Thomases. I'm, I'm always, I got two Thomases a week. Yay, <laughs> yay. And Miss Sai Cooper, thank you for joining us. Uh, we're going to get, get her a GoFundMe for a real computer so we can <laughs> see her oh. in full HD and y'all can hear her when she talks. People want to see the fuzzy ears move when you move. They're not fuzzy. When you move. She's not on the computer right now? <laughs> she, she is on the computer for some reason. I don't know what, what computer she's on. but uh, hmm. It's my school computer. <laughs> ah. And that explains it all. But thank y'all so much for joining. We're going to have all of their information at the end of the video for y'all to see, including their Twitches, including their socials, including any way you would like to support them, especially going through this pandemic and stuff like that. So please make sure you support these three dope individuals. They are content creating each and every single week. Follow, subscribe, do it all. I have been the Anomaly Will Farrow, and we will catch you next time.